What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Astro Sean. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a native chart interpretation of LeBron James. I wanted to get this video out before the end of Capricorn season because I've been thinking about doing a series in which for each season, I'll do a celebrity or prominent person's birth chart per their sun sign. So come Aquarius season, I'll find an Aquarius and I'll do their birth chart. Same with Pisces and so on and so on. So with LeBron, LeBron was born December 30th, 1984 in Akron, Ohio, making him a Capricorn. Now, first I want to get into some of the characteristics of his chart. In terms of his modes or his modality, he is mostly mutable, which points to him having a very flexible and changeable nature. He's probably someone who can adjust with the flow rather easily. He also has a nice balance between his cardinal and fixed signs, meaning that he is able to initiate things and take a leadership role, as well as have enough stamina and stubbornness to make sure that his projects are long lasting. His elements, as you can see, are very evenly disputed. So he has um, majority water, which is showing that he is someone who is more intuitive, more emotional than he lets on in the surface. This is also someone who may be able to understand other people or read other people and use that to their advantage. He has second coming is air and air signs are intellectual. They're good with communication and thoughts. And then the fire is good for the athletic component. Someone who's able to get up and go and the earth is good for the material success. So he has a nice balance between the four elements. So we can say off the bat that LeBron is someone who at least in terms of his disposition or demeanor is very well balanced. In terms of his dominant planets, it is no surprise that Mars is his most dominant planet as Mars governs athleticism, the physical body, sports, and all those type of things. And his Mars is in Pisces, in Pisces rules, Hollywood, fame, the media, and so his Mars being dominant is very much so represented by having a prominent athletic career because it's in the 10th house. And we'll touch more on that later. His second most dominant planet is Neptune. And Neptune also deals with Hollywood. It also deals with the media. And then we have Venus there as well, which is Venus deals with relationships, being liked, money. Okay. Now his least dominant planet is Jupiter. So in that respect, he may have trouble expanding himself and looking at the bigger picture. He may get caught up in his own, you know, motives and drives. And with that Jupiter, he may lack proper judgment in some respects. Now he has a bowl shaped chart with most of the planets located on the West Hemisphere. And when you see that in the natal chart, that means that your life is primarily focused on relating to others on the interpersonal level. You, he is someone who is severely lacking when it comes to knowing who he is on a personal level and he seeks for fulfillment through his relationships. So uh, he may have to spend a lot of time alone in order to understand who he is and to understand his own individual identity outside of others. Okay, and this is also going to show up due to other placements in his natal chart, as you're going to see when we get into it. So he's a Capricorn, and his sun is at the ninth degree. The nine vibrates to Mars, and again, Mars deals with athleticism, the physical body, um, muscle, willpower, and men. So his son at the ninth degree of Capricorn denotes a focused, hardworking, strategic, and practical approach to life and the career. Much is placed on his social status as well as being respected. Capricorns have a strong need to be seen in an authority and to be respected. And they have the endurance to see things through to the end in order to meet their goals. Again, respect is the key word for Capricorn. Some other key words are leadership, 
responsibility, self-reliance, depression, seriousness, paternal, and ambition. And as you can see, this right here is his son in Capricorn and it's in the seventh house. And the seventh house is the house of other people. It is the house that deals with partnerships, contractual arrangements such as marriage and business and how we relate to others. So it echoes the theme from having a bowl shaped chart on the left hemisphere because this is showing that his life is very much so public, which it is. Now, the way his son is situated, the son in the seventh house denotes the life lived for other people. Partnership with marriage and business are of the utmost importance to him. Without others, he feels empty. His life purpose is to relate to others while maintaining his own sense of self with this challenge of the seventh house. This also tends to produce a rather dominant marriage partner. His son is making a conjunction to Neptune, which can show his father being in prison and rather neglectful. This can show him having a weakened ego or a dissolved ego. And this is the son that can deal with having that Hollywood life, but also being somewhat of a corporate slave. And I say that because Neptune rules slavery and Capricorn rules corporate or corporations. And as we all know, even though he's a celebrity, the NBA is a very powerful organization. And so they obviously wield a lot of influence over him and they are the ones that are in charge. And we'll get more on the NBA's influence later. Now his son is forming a sexual to Pluto and Mars, which is a great athletic aspect. This makes him resilient, persistent, especially influential when it deals with a career in games and sports because his Pluto is in the fifth house, which rules games, sports, gambling, and love. Now, his son is challenged by the moon, the North Node, and Saturn. Now, for the moon, his son is forming a square to the, not for, uh, yeah, his son is forming a square to the moon. So he may find it difficult to relate to women on a personal level. His son, semi square Venus, reinforces this notion. There are often, with this aspect, is this conflict between the mother and father, which has a direct negative impact on the native so he may have seen his mother and father or maybe his mother and the men that she chose to be with that may have had some conflict and that may have negatively skewed his interpretation of relationships between a man and a woman the good thing about this aspect is that physical activity helps to relieve that tension that sun square moon can also make him very domineering, especially when it comes to women. And it can also make him someone who can display narcissistic traits from time to time. Now his son is forming a sexual squadron to the North Node. This is where his ego expression goes too far, particularly in pursuit of money and a certain lifestyle. And he will likely impose his values onto other people. This also makes him a di big disciplinarian when it comes to his children. Son Simi Squastana reinforces taking discipline way too far. However, this can also have manifested as a father or father fig figure overdoing it with the discipline on him. Now his ascendant is in Gemini and the ascendant governs the physical body. Gemini ascendant is excellent for sports because it gives a dexterous, flexible, fast, and clever disposition and body. And it also makes one prone to operate from multiple modes of operation. So you may not know exactly where they're coming from. So that throws the element of surprise, which is good when you're talking about a sport like basketball. Now, Gemini also rules all forms of communication, including the media. And he is very much so involved in the media and communicating with them. Now, this can also manifest as an issue with the lungs, issues with breathing, and issues with the hands. Now, Mercury would be his chart ruler because whatever sign is in your first house, the planet that naturally governs that sign is the chart ruler. That is a very important planet. And the ascendant, again, is showing your physical body. So with his Mercury and Sagittarius, naturally that can make him a very large person because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, which is the largest planet in the solar system, in our solar system, and can fit 
all the planets in it at least once. So it is a huge gas planet. And this Mercury he has formed a conjunction to Uranus. Uranus is about things that are unusual or shocking. So this can produce an unusually large and unconventional size. He is 6'8 and 250 pounds. So again, unusual. He may throw people off guard in person. Like, damn, I ain't know you was that damn tall. Damn. <laughs> now this also, this conjunction also makes him very group oriented. However, he prefers to be the boss and authority in said groups. He also likes to expand and have deep conversation with people in his immediate environment. And this can also make him a humanitarian as well as duplicitous and willful. A sibling or neighbors or distant relatives may have also wielded a strong influence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now his ascendant is making a lot of great aspects, which it's really good. It can point to being well-liked, being very popular, and being able to have your way in life. Venus trying to his ascendant makes it easy for him to attract friends and attention from the opposite sex. Venus ruling the fifth reinforces sports and games, and this can also show him having a friendly and sociable demeanor, at least on the surface, which can generate a lot of admiration, popularity, and being very likable. His ascendant is trying his midheaven, which is great for a prominent career that involves the physical body. He's also very receptive to the public. Mars trying his ascendant reinforces the theme of sports, and this can produce a strong athletic constitution as well as being respected by men. Pluto trying ascendant is very important in his case because it can make him very influential and lead a prominent life. His, just by him being him, he naturally can inspire the lives of other people for good or for worse. This aspect also can produce physical regeneration from injury. So a lot of big time athletes and athletes in general will suffer a lot of injuries with the physical body. So with him having Pluto trying to his ascendant, that is showing that he is more easily able to heal from injuries. This is also good for money. Now he, all ha now he has Neptune opposition the ascendant. And Neptune is showing the injury aspect of it, particularly to his knees, teeth, limbs, bones, and skin. And this can also make him rather deceptive and spoiled. There's much hidden beneath his outward personality when you have Neptune opposing the ascendant, okay? He also may have to take some pain medication or something to help ease the injuries and things like that and to deal with the day-to-day -day life. Again, this is a picture of him representing his stature, 6'8", 250 pounds, evident by Mercury, his chart ruler being a Sagittarius conjunct Uranus. Now, I also want to speak about Cancer being in his first house. So he's a Gemini ascendant, but as you can see, Cancer spans a large portion of his first house. So that would make the moon, which rules Cancer, his co-ruler. So the moon as the co-ruler means that women, especially the mother, are going to be instrumental in his life and they may have influenced his athleticism because he has Mars on the tent. Now, upon doing some research on this, Gloria, his mother, gave him a miniature hoop as an infant. Probably because he was so damn tall as a child. <laughs> this also makes him emotionally responsive to his environment and a lot of Freedom is needed in his personal life, mainly due to his work routine. Now, his moon is in Aries, which compounds the theme of athleticism because Mars rules Aries. On a personal level, he is impulsive, short-tempered, brash, and may display selfishness on his worst days. Now, that moon is in the 11th house, which deals with him working within a network or group of men. Again, he is very group-oriented. And he is probably emotionally invested in the lives of his teammates. This makes him impulsive, strong-willed, hot-headed, and masculine. He has the ability to subconsciously manifest objectives into the physical world because his moon is forming a trine to Uranus. Now, the moon square Jupiter reinforces the God conflicts that he may have. And this can produce a difference in morals and values with respect to the mother and wife. He also may lack judgment when it comes to women. This is a picture of his school 
And this is evident of him having his Mercury conjunct Uranus, him being a humanitarian. He also has Leo on the third house cusp, which can deal with him creating a school. So this is something that is very admirable on his part. Now, he has Virgo on the fourth house cusp, and I wanted to mention this because mainly of this part of private enemies he has here, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Virgo on the fourth in general suggests that he is very meticulous and high maintenance when it comes to his home. Mercury also rules Virgo, and with Mercury ruling this house and Sagittarius, it is conducive to a large, elaborate home. Now, his father figure may be very critical, and he himself may be very critical of his own kids. He is also critical and hard on himself, and this can produce someone who is insecure deep down inside. He may have a hard time winding down at home, and that can produce a nervous stomach on his worst days. Now, the part of private enemies suggests that his housekeepers or people that work for him can double as enemies. So he may want to be careful with the way he treats his um, housekeepers. You know, again, he may be very meticulous, someone who is like, I want my shit to be done this way. You need to clean it this way, do it this way. And if he is talking to them in a very derogatory way or coming from that Capricorn point of view, you know, sometimes Capricorns can be very condescending, even without intending to. Sometimes they know exactly what they're doing. But in that respect, he can create enemies for the people that work for him, in particular, his housekeepers. Now, the next question of this video is going to be focused on his relationships. So the ascendant deals with the self and the physical body. And the point opposite that is the descendant right here. And that deals with the not self. It deals with your person, the people that you attract, your own traits that you are not completely owning and projecting onto other people, as well as your, um, as, as well as what you need to attract in order to be a more balanced human being. Venus also deals with relationships. So in this session, we're gonna speak about his Venus that's in the ninth house in Aquarius. And we're also gonna talk a little bit about the Pluto in the fifth house. Just with the Pluto in the fifth house, he can, that can make it easy for him to attract people to him, especially when you're talking about just casual affairs. He has no issue attracting people to him. Now his Venus is at the 25th degree of Aquarius. The 25th degree is an analytical degree, but it's also one of secrecy. So there is a lot of things that may be hidden when it comes to his relationships. Venus in Aquarius is great for earning money within a group. And again, it reinforces the notion that he likes to be part of a team. However, he may try to wield a lot of influence or control over these groups, or these groups may wield a lot of influence and control over him. His Venus is forming a sextant to Neptune, which is a harmonious aspect, which can produce wealth, being idolized by friends and lovers, as well as groups. Now, that Venus in Aquarius he has is forming a square to Saturn and Scorpio, which denotes money affecting his self-esteem. This also shows severe financial ties to a powerful organization, which is also evident of his south node in Scorpio conjunct Saturn. More on that later. You want to stay tuned because we're going to get really into that in the next couple of slides. So with that Venus square Saturn, they can show someone who has low self-esteem and they will use their money and their value in order to control other people. So that may be a thing within his relationships. Aquarius and Venus in general, well, Venus and Aquarius in general is not conducive to a loving, harmonious relationship. This can make him or his partner rather cold. Love and closeness may be lacking, and he may get along better with friends than he does his lovers. Now, he has Sagittarius on the descendant, so freedom is of the utmost importance to him. However, due to Jupiter being a Capricorn, the freedom is mainly due to his working career. And as I have shown with his chart, he has a stellium in the sixth house, which is showing that a lot of practice went into his career and him being the phenomenal basketball player that he is today. Now, Venus in the ninth house shows that he has long distance relationships and the more liberty he has, the better. So 
the way he's trying to set up, obviously he's going to do a lot of traveling. He's already going to be involved with his career, and his partner may have to adjust to that. And I mean this in the ninth, also dealing with exotic love, vacations, financially beneficial contracts. The theme of freedom in relationships is strong. Attracting a large amount of money, being adored by many, especially women, philosophy and love go hand in hand, an abundance of friends, and he may have a lot of relationships with women. Now, his Juno, which is an asteroid that deals with the main bond of contention in our relationships, is at the 10th degree of Libra, which can denote challenges, achieving harmonious and balanced relationships and difficulty relating to the opposite sex, at least on the emotional level. And this is echoed by his sun square moon aspect in his chart that we spoke about earlier. Now his partner will be entitled to a large portion, excuse my typo here, and excuse this extra period here, I'm just noticing that. But his partner will be entitled to a large portion of his money because Jupiter is in the eighth house and Jupiter is the great benefit and it is a planet of abundance. So whatever Jupiter, it can deal with you having a lot or there being a preponderance of whatever house is placed in. And the eighth house is the house of other people's money. And Jupiter is ruling his seventh house through that descendant. So if Burman ever get a divorce, his woman will be entitled to a large portion of that money. This can also manifest as control and jealousy issues, as well as his punish his partner punishing him in some way. He also has Capricorn taking up a lot of his seventh house. So we have to look at Saturn. And Saturn is in Scorpio, which reinforces the theme of control and jealousy. Now, this portion will be about his career. So when we talk about the career, we want to look at the midheaven and Saturn. So with Mars in Pisces on the midheaven, his physical activity is channeled through his career. He must be someone who is emotionally tired and devoted to his career. This again can make him a corporate slave and also prone towards scandal. Sun parallel Uranus reinforces him working within a group. Sun parallel Neptune compounds the theme because Neptune was Pisces. It compounds the theme of media, television, deceptive, and again, a corporate slave. Now, Mars is a part of a grand trine in his chart, and grand trines are a harmonious aspect configuration involving three or at least three planets. Grand trines facilitate the energy of the planets involved. So to break this down, is Mars is forming a trine with his midheaven, which is his career and public life, which is also forming a trine to his Pluto, in the fifth, and Pluto deals with prominence, and in the fifth, it deals with games, children, romance, and also his Gemini ascendant is involved, which is denoting him as a person or his physical body. So all this together can lead to a prominent, influential career involving the physical body. The ruler of the tenth, which is Jupiter, is also in the eighth, which reinforces a prominent and influential career. Now, in terms of his destiny and life purpose, his life purpose was to make money on his own merit. And with it being in the 12th, it was meant for him to earn his money through the entertainment industry, but as well as develop some solid spiritual values to live by. To get more into that grand trine, as you can see, this is his Mars and mid heaven in the 10th. This is his ascendant, and this is Pluto. He also has a kite formation. Which can, which is an extension of a grand trine because it adds some. Because the grand trine can be a rather stagnant aspect because it's a very comfortable aspect, so you may not feel the need to act on it. But when you have a kite involved, you you have some sex stores coming into play, and you have um, and you have some an opposition, which can make, which can activate that grand trine, and when that happens then you know you will be more prone to act on it so a kite you will see a kite in the charts of a lot of popular people and grand trines are also can also manifest as winning a lot of awards being award winning being breaking the mold and just being someone who can really 
channel their talents and make them concrete. Especially because we're talking about Mars, Pluto, and the Midheaven here. Now he has a T-square between Saturn and Venus and the North Node, and I'm gonna get into that in the next slide. Okay, so his Mars and Pisces does make him someone that is easy to be compromised. Also with that Sun conjunct Neptune. Now you combine this with his South Node, which is your past life profile, being in Scorpio, conjunct Saturn, that can deal with someone who is on, or at least very much so tied to a powerful organization, in his case, the NBA. So he may be financially as well as spiritually indebted. Um, these are the issues, but to get more on that South Node and that Saturn conjunction, he may very well be one of those people. Well, let me go back and say this. Oftentimes we idolize celebrities and believe that they are living the life that we want to live. We see the money, we see the fame and adoration in the big house, the nice cars, the beautiful wife, what have you. But based on what I'm looking at in his chart, not to take anything away from him because he's very accomplished, but sometimes things are not always what they seem. And you can still be a very prominent person, have a lot of money, and still be not in control of your own destiny and someone else can be pulling the strings. And when you're talking about that Saturn conjoint to the South Node, absolutely. Now, I wanna get into some of his asteroids. He has Mars conjunct Achilles, which shows that his subconscious actions are his own self undoing. He may not be particularly mindful or aware of how his actions can negatively affect him and others. He has Mercury conjunct nemesis, which can deal with enemies in the workplace. This also reinforces the theme of people that work for him or his close associates are doubling as enemies. So he also wants to watch out for that. That is why I picked that part of private enemies in the fourth here. So that is something major with him. Venus conjunct hygiene can deal with issues with hygiene in a relationship. And Venus conjunct symphony can deal with him being judged harshly by his teammates, a group of people, friends, and a partner. So in conclusion, this was a brief native chart interpretation. Obviously, there is so much more to be discovered. If you want to look at the totality of his chart, I didn't have much time to go into his 12 houses and break down each particular planet sign aspect. But I wanted to give a brief overview into the man that he has become, particularly in terms of his career. So if you want a more in-depth reading, Email me at warishan37 at gmail.com with the reading and the subject. And my turnaround time is very quickly. It's very quick. So like this video if you like what I talked about. Leave a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And until then, next time.